All right, so this is nowhere to go, secondary sources. Um, I am Alex Boris. I use my pronouns are she, her, and I am a commons librarian. Um, and kind of some of what I do is research assistance, work at the public service desk, and I do some cool programming stuff. Um, so yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Brittany Norwood. I'm also a commons librarian. So much like Alex, I do research assistance, I do programming, different things like that. You also might find us at the front desk from Sunday through Tuesday. Yep, yep. All right. So this is kind of what we'll be covering. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, what database, what are databases, um, how to get to the database, um, and what does research look and feel like? Um, and then at the end of everything, we're gonna have a 15 minute Q and A. Um, so if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. We will get to them at the end. Okay, so let's get started. Now, before we just swing into this, we wanna give you all a chance to tell us what you think secondary sources are. So go ahead and put the um, your answers in the chat. And Nilo, um, the previous sections should be on the um, UT Libraries YouTube page. I will put that in chat at the end of the lesson. Okay, somebody, go ahead and tell us what you think a secondary source is. And if you're not comfortable putting it public, you can send it directly to me. Okay, so somebody saying journals. Articles. It was um, Thursday, uh, February 10th. Okay, well, thank you for that, you all. Alex, you go ahead and change the slide. I will give you all a bit of a rundown on what secondary sources are. So, Journals and articles can be secondary sources. But here's the thing, a secondary source is a resource that comments on sites, adds to or refers to the original events that have already taken place. So they are sources about a topic after the time period that you're looking at. And this, little diagram that I've made um, kind of talks a little bit about, you know, why that framing is important. Because yeah, journals, articles, books, these things can all be secondary sources, but it really depends on the time frame that you are looking at in regards to your own topic. So if we think about what I have right here, um, there's a review of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. It was written yesterday. If you're studying the film's impact when it was first released, when the first three years of it being released, then this review could be a secondary source actually, because it's thinking, it's looking at the, um, the impact from the film and a review of the film from a different perspective. It's commenting maybe on things that have happened. And it's outside of the time period that you're already thinking of. However, if you're studying the legacy of the film, so maybe you're thinking about um, the, its impact still today, then the same review could be a primary source. Um, if you're looking at that sort of currency, then yeah, this is something that falls within the time period of your topic. So really a secondary source depends on any of the degree of separation from what you're looking at. It depends more on um, 
how you're thinking about the time frame of your topic. You're needing something that's commenting on it as opposed to you know, being in the middle of the action. Okay, and Alex, can you switch sides, please? So this brings us to our next topic about what databases actually are. So they are systems that aggregate and organize information. For example, articles from various journals. And they are searchable, which means that you can go to them, you can input some keywords, and it should search through the information that it has within it to find things or find sources that mention those things. And if you're still confused, there is a guide here by the University of Chicago, Illinois, that goes into a lot um, more detail about this. And a quick note is that one database won't show all the information in our collection. So if you are wanting to find a more comprehensive list of sources, you're probably going to have to check several different databases to find out. And now we're going to touch on the difference between articles, journals, databases, and vendors, because this is something that we often see students have some issues with. So articles are typically their standalone published works. They may be peer reviewed. They're often included in larger publications, so journals, sometimes books. And they're typically more hyper focused on a specific topic. So um, these journals typically um, they are journal articles are looking at something that is quite specific. Um, it's I find it pretty rare that you're finding a journal article that is talking about, you know, a broad scope of something such as um, the definition of maybe environmental science, because these are more supposed to be um, snippets that show specific insights into the field you're looking at. Journals, on the other hand, are aggregate works that are published periodically. They're often peer reviewed, although that's not necessarily the case. Each issue contains multiple texts, often articles, and they are broader in scope. So a journal itself might be focused on, say, environmental science, whereas the article is going to be focused or the article within it is going to be focused on something specific to the field. And then we get to databases. So databases are actually quite different from journals. They are the things that store and organize this information. Like I said, they make it searchable. They are broader in scope than journals even, well, often at least. And they usually only contain select publications. And some thing that we see a lot of students get confused with is the difference between a database and a vendor. So vendors are the companies that license, manage, and maintain databases. And they often manage more than one database. So something like EBSCO may own several different databases. So um, if you are searching for something, then um, you might be using EBSCO, but it's more helpful if you're thinking about the title of the database you're looking at. So something that comes to my mind immediately is ProQuest. So ProQuest owns um, PsycInfo, which is one of my favorite databases as somebody who used to be a psychology major. Um, that being said, ProQuest also owns databases in several other fields. So for example, they also own several historical newspaper databases. Because of this, um, if I were to tell my professor that I went to ProQuest to find my sources, then they may say, well, what about ProQuest? It's kind of like saying, oh, um, somebody asking you the title of a book you read and you say, oh, um, I read uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. You know, there are several different pieces to that. And saying that, yeah, you're giving an idea of what you did. But you're not saying, you know, specifically, I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which, you know, is quite different from some of the other books in the series. So now let's talk about how we can get to the databases and how you can get to finding your secondary sources. All right. I am going to talk about this part. Um, so how to get to databases. It's actually really easy. Uh, we try to make everything easy for you. So first you'll go to the library's homepage. 
Um, and there is a tab that you'll see, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll demo it here in a minute, um, that says find materials. And then you're looking for a link that says articles and databases. Um, now that's gonna take you to a page that you can see in this picture um, to the right, um, where that is what we call the articles and databases page. Um, there you can search for a specific title um, or you can search by subject, as you can see in the picture. Um, and then there are also other things you can do it by type. So if you're looking for primary sources, that's how you do that. Um, however, for secondary sources, um, a lot of what, um, at least what I like to use initially are some of these most popular databases down here. Um, so yeah, it's super easy to get to this page. Um, and next, I'm just gonna show you um, as I show you kind of what research feels like. Um, I will say what I'm gonna show you is just one way to do research. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that that is the only way to do it. Um, but I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can on what you might see when you're looking in a database. So if you'll give me one moment, I'm gonna stop sharing and show you my other screen. All right, can everybody kind of see my screen now? Just want to double check. Uh, you should be able to. So this is the main library webpage. Um, it's just lib.utk.edu. Um, now where the find materials are is right down here. And when you click that articles and databases page, it takes you here. And this is what I was talking about on where you can search, you can type in a title, you can look by subject. There are a lot of little subject tags there. Um, and then you can also look by type if you're looking for something fairly specific. Um, like I said, a good one is like newspapers and newspapers and primary sources and that. Now, um, I'm gonna briefly kind of talk about these most popular databases because I feel like those are the ones that uh, I use the most, at least when I'm doing more general searches. Um, and kind of give you an idea of what searching in a database looks like. Um, so one thing I will say real quick though, um, just as an aside, there's also research guides um, and that page looks like this. Um, I'm just a quick, you know, if you have a specific subject that you're working on, this is a great way we curate guides specifically to subjects. So like for English, there's an English one. Some of them are class specific. Some of them are just subject specific. Um, the history is a really good example of that. Um, if you're looking for um, like anything like that, like there's the food and drink one. Um, so I, I just wanted to quickly mention that. Um, but all right, so going back, we're on the articles and databases page. Um, and I wanted to kind of show you kind of a process that I would do if I was searching for something. So I came up kind of with a mock search. Um, so what I thought is I would search for something like, say you're doing a paper on cryptids um, or things like Bigfoot or things like that. So you type cryptids in here and you can kind of see that when you do that, some of the databases will pull that up for you or give you like hints. Um, so that's always nice. Um, oh, I gotta log in again. <laughs> Let's try that again. Academic search. All right. All right, so when you're on this page, you'll see it pulls up everything that says anything with the word cryptids. Um, 
Now, I always tell people to look for a couple of things when doing research. First, in every database, you want to make sure that you've set this setting to relevance um, because that is going to pull up anything that has the word cryptids and put it up top. So whatever the search thinks is most relevant, it's gonna do that. Um, and if you are looking for what a lot of secondary source papers ask for is peer reviewed materials, there's a filter for that. Um, so you just click peer reviewed. And as you can see, only about 11 pulled up with cryptids. Um, and I find this a lot when like searching sometimes, you'll find that a phrase that you might have used isn't pulling up exactly what you want. Um, so what I like to do is say, this one is the closest one that you can find to what you're looking for. I like to look at these little subject terms here um, and you can see it says monsters as a subject term. So, okay, well, instead of searching for cryptids, why not just search for monsters? Let's see what that comes up. And it pulls up a lot more resources. <laughs> um, those subject tags are really great um, and kind of help can help you broaden your searches if you've gone too narrow. Um, now, there are other searches you can do. So say specifically you are looking for Bigfoot. Uh, you'll see that this recommends Bigfoot and Satchwatch. Um, and if we click that search term there, it's going to lessen our search even more from 2,000 results to 143. And again, I always make sure it's on relevance and it's still limiter is peer reviewed. Um, so that pulls all that up. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing, my biggest advice would say when you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you um, use different search terms to get what you need. Um, because every database has different subject tags. Um, those, those subject terms um, and different ways of saying the exact same thing um, and how it is cataloged in uh, a database. Um, and I wanted to show you some, one other thing real quick. Um, say you come up with the term mythical creatures. Um, now I've still got it on relevance. I've still got it on peer reviewed. However, if you go down here, you're gonna see there are some resources that are in a different language. Um, and sometimes this does happen because we are pulling from different databases. Um, so luckily for us, under refine results, if you go down here, there is a language one. If you click on that, click on whatever language you can read um, and that'll, narrow it down again to articles that you can actually use. Um, so that pushed that down to 36. You can make sure that are things that you are looking for. Um, so that was kind of my brief overview of that kind of database. Um, going back to the articles and databases page, I wanted to quickly kind of go over what each of these databases kind of equates to in this most popular section. Um, so Academic Search Complete, that is a database that is, is pretty wide range. Um, I recommended things for more humanities, so like more um, English or um, history or stuff like that. It's, it's pretty broad. Um, I like to start there a lot. Uh, business Source Complete, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. It has a lot of good business resources. Um, this one, I call it, I say CINAHL, um, that is more of a, a medical database. So CINAHL and this one down here, PubMed, if you're looking for, uh, like biology, any of, any of the science that's, uh, mostly medical, um, and even some psychology, but it's, it's more closely for medical, um, that's where you go, um, for this next one, Eric. Um, that's an education database. So if you have questions about, or if your research paper is about uh, education, Eric is a great resource. Um, the, we've put uh, dissertations and theses on here. Um, if you're looking for a specific dissertation or thesis, it's a great resource. 
uh, APA psych info. That one uh, is more for psychology. Um, so if you have more of a psychological question, that's where I recommend you go. And Scopus and Web of Science, I kind of lump those together. Um, they're more for like the social sciences or sciences. Um, I kind of like to think of Web of Science and Academic Search Complete as kind of the same, except for Web of Science is specific, more specific to science and Academic Search Complete is better for humanities questions. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my quick overview of those databases.